On this episode of Locked on Angels, the Angels sweep the Oakland A's and they move to 12 and 10 in June. Are we excited? Yes. Should we be hopeful? Eh, that's a bit complicated and we'll talk about it. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is, and yes, we are. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen to the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. We love five stars. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Become a Locked On Every Day. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's really one of the best ways to get in touch with John and I and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode of Locked on Angels is brought to you by Booking.com or Booking.Yeah. The right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals and their city. Can you believe that? Check out Booking.com for your stay today. Hey, thanks for being here for this episode of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. It's our third season here at Locked on Angels. We're covering Angels baseball Monday through Friday, every single weekday for you, having the conversations that you want to have here on Locked on Angels. Thank you for being an everyday or with us. Mike, on today's show, Rendon is close to coming back. What does that mean for this team? Who's worse, Artie Marino or John Fisher? Which mm. owner takes the cake in terms of worst owner awards? And the Angels completed the sweep of the A's yesterday, which was great to see. Now, <laughs> I have to laugh because uh, there were a lot of like, well, that, that was expected. They, they, you should have swept the A's. Well, come on. How often do we play teams like the A's and walk away with one win, two wins? Yeah. They completed the sweep with Rowanzi Contreras starting the game. I got to say, good on them for getting it done, right? Yeah, absolutely. Zach Neto actually said after the game, we did what good teams do to teams that are worse than them because ah. good teams have done that to us. And so I mm. appreciated the self-awareness. Speaking of Contreras, he started off the game, top of the first, got a K, a ground out, then a double from Andujar, and then a ground out. So a good first inning outside of that double. Bottom of the first, Sean Owell goes the other way for a hit. That's always really good to see. Renjifo doubles, Sean Owell stops at third. Then Ward pops up, Sano strikes out, welcome back. And yeah. then Calhoun is intentionally walked, and then Pilar grounds out. They did intentionally walk Calhoun to get to Pilar, and a month ago, you wouldn't have. Right but now, in June... You do. So he's an interesting conversation piece we'll talk about in the next segment. Uh, there was a really a wasted chance here. Runners at second and third, nobody out. This seems to be kind of the narrative that the Angels have fallen into in the last couple of years. We can talk about it ad nauseum, but good news was it didn't stay that way. We'll get to their big inning soon, but top of the second, Johnny, there was a ground out and a fly out, then a single and then a walk, and then Max Schumann doubles and Alvarez scores. But then there was this weird kind of situation at home plate. Why don't you talk about it? Yeah, McCann missed home plate. He was the trailing runner. So Alvarez did score. McCann stumbles and like literally steps right over home plate. So he runs over and Alvarez grabs him and says, no, 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 go touch home plate. And he goes back and touches it. But because Alvarez, the lead runner, touched and grabbed the second runner and told him to go back, yeah, he was out. So... It only ended up being one run scored, and then the inning was over at that point. So a huge break yeah. for Roan C. Contreras. And Mike, even better than that, the A's did it, not the Angels. <laughs> that, right. If yeah. you would have closed my eyes and told me, hey, this happened in the game, I would have been like... Who did it? Did Joe right. Adele miss home plate? <laughs> Poor Adele. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it reminded me of that Logan O'Hoppy walk-off home run where... Pilar thought they caught it at the wall, and in fact they did, but then dropped it over the wall. Trey Cabbage dropped it over the wall, thank you. And then he was running back, and the first base coach can't touch anybody, and the runners can't touch. And so there was a moment where they were like, hey, 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 hey. And yeah. so that didn't happen here, any sort of contact, and then it's an automatic out. Right, yeah. So that was the situation in the top of the second. Top of the fourth, there was a leadoff double and a walk to end Contreras's day. His final line was, 
three innings pitched, four hits, one earned run, two Ks, two walks on 61 pitches. 65 was going to be his limit in this one. He got 15 called strikes plus whiffs, Mike, and the slider was the best pitch that he had going in this one. When he needed to get back into account, he was able to throw that slider to help him hit the zone, get a swing and miss that he needed, stuff like that. He's got the repertoire. He does. To be a starter. He does. Uh, now, he you know probably needs to be stretched out and whatnot, and he is a former starter, like we talked about yesterday with the Pirates. So while the Angels are struggling to find starters here and there and everywhere, uh, by the way, our boy Davis Daniel is going to be starting in today's game, which is great news. And uh, shout out to Davis Daniel because we're big fans of him. Uh, Hans Kraus did induce a double play to get out of that inning. Uh, he also got a fly out to get out of that inning, I should say. So Hans Kraus came in. That was how the line ended for Contreras in the fourth. Bottom of the six, it was a five-run inning for the Halos. It was still one nothing as they entered the game and entered the inning, and the Angels had gone hitless since the first inning. So it looked like one of those games where we're like, come on, Halos, you, you, you can't blow this, right? The last hit was a Renhifo double. So this inning started with a single from Renhifo, then a strikeout from Ward and Sano. So there's yeah. two outs, and then there's a walk to Calhoun, and then Joey Estes, the ace starter, finally gets taken out which was great, and the Angels then went after the bullpen. Guillaume pinch hits, he takes a walk to load the bases, and then Mickey Moniak comes up, and he he gets a uh, a bases loaded walk, right? Did that, no, he got hit there? by he got hit by a pitch. I thought he was going to hit another granny because he was up with the bases loaded again, and he got hit by a pitch to bring in the run, and so that made it one to one. And then our boy, Big Papa Zach Neto, has a bases clearing double. It drives in three, makes it four to one angels. And just for a little spice, Matt Thice doubles in Neto and makes it five to one. Now, did you hear the conversation that Ron Washington had after the game about Neto? And I this did. And it was great yes. because he was saying like he, Neto was struggling and, and he's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of frustrated here. And Wash literally just goes, stop swinging for the fences. Like yeah. just, just make contact, bro. Well, the best part was he was looking at the iPad and Ron Washington said, you're not going to find the answer in the iPad. Right. Stop swinging for the fences. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And then, and the very next at bat lines one down the, the left field line and gets a, gets a double and, and scores all the, all the runners on the base. So I, I love that. And, Part of me really thinks, Johnny, that the future of this team is going to be driven by the bat of Zach Neto because lately he seems to be coming up big in moments where we desperately need runs and to knock in runs. And this was all with two outs, so that was yeah. pretty spectacular. Yeah, he seems to have the the clutch gene, Mike, when it comes to coming up in those big moments. Now, Hans Kraus, Matt Moore, Hunter Strickland, and a returning Gio Zuniga, they finished out the game. Zuniga did give up a run in the ninth, but at that point it was just kind of like, meh, it's fine. Uh, so the final score was five to two. The Angels complete the sweep of the A's. Now we got some questions mm -hmm. and comments on our socials and our YouTube comments. Thank you for coming over and commenting in our YouTube section, by the way, regarding the Angels playing a little bit better lately. Should we count them out for the season so soon? And, and, I've got some thoughts. Why don't you start us out? Yeah, I think that we have to really pay attention to, one, how they've played against the really good teams. Mm -hmm. And and they haven't played well against the really good teams. Right now, they have one of the easiest schedules for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. This is why we're seeing them do what they're doing. It was against the A's. We have the Tigers coming up. That's where we have to really temper our expectations. And in fact, our theme of no expectations for this year needs to rise to the surface again. Volume needs to be turned up on that simply because we're going to see the Angels put together, I think, some winning streaks, and we're going to see the Angels do well against the teams that are not as great as they are for a couple of reasons. One, they played those really difficult teams pretty close. Yeah. There's a lot of games where they should have won, but there was a blown save or a bonehead play or an overrun or whatever might be the case, right? Yeah. And so – all of those things can be cleaned up. That's the best part about what has happened so far. But I don't know if you're going to find that cleaned up this year hmm. or maybe even next year because this team is still learning how to play and they're learning how to win. So 
What we saw in the first half, even though the record wasn't great, was a competitive team. This is where you hear some of the AM830 guys and some of the fans go, a lot of fight. That's This is what they're talking about. They're talking sure. about how they, they, they hung in there, didn't get the win, but they hung in there. Second thing, they are playing teams that are not as great as them. And because they hung in there against the really good teams, they have somewhat, let's say 75% learned how to win. And so mm-hmm. you're going to see that come through against teams like the A's and the Rockies and the White Sox, those teams. From the beginning of the season, John, you and I said, at best, this team is a 500 team. Mm -hmm. If everything clicks and everything works, I think that they have a chance to get back to 500. I think they have a chance to finish kind of clean and Mm kind of strong, which is great. Doesn't mean that doesn't mean that I'm going to be hopeful that something big is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. It it means that they're growing and they're learning and they're developing. And that's really what we wanted from this season. Yeah, absolutely. Now I know it's fun and this is fun and winning's fun and the guys are having fun, but we're 13 games under 500. That is a huge deficit to climb out of. And I know that people might look at the Astros who were 12 and 24 to start the season and are now, 40 and 40 and get excited about that. But if you think about 12 and 24, that's 36 games. And now they're 40 and 40. So we're halfway through the season. It's taken 25 to 50% of the season for the Astros to get to 500 at this Mm -hmm. point. And I look at where the angels are. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure they can get back to 500 until September. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's going to take a big, huge ladder to get out of that deficit of 13 games under 500. And yeah, they're playing some easy teams right now. It's exciting. It's fun. They've hung in there with the Phils. They've hung in there with the guardians. They've hung in there with the Dodgers. They swept the Padres. I know the Padres are not one of the top tier teams, but they're in contention because they're always in that wild card contention in the NL West. But I, I just think we need to temper our expectations. Also, it's going to be really frustrating if Artie and company see this and go, well, maybe we should go for it. Maybe we that can, tra- we yeah. can trade Caden Dana to go get somebody to start for us. Right? Like that's yeah. the last place that I want to end up. And so if you feel frustrated now and you feel frustrated by how this season has gone, don't hang your hat on them being super good, or at least getting back to competitive baseball, because if they make those moves where they're trading a Dana, they're trading uh, uh, Guzman or not Guzman. Uh, yeah. 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 Guys like that. You're going to be very upset because that's what they yeah. did last year. And last year I contend that they had pretty good reason to do that. They thought trout was coming back. They thought they were going to get Rendon back. They had Otani on the team. They made trades and it's cost them Edgar Caro. Who's, I think batting like 390 in the month of June right now for the double A team and the White Great. Sox. So yeah, that, that's uh, a lot of fun for us. It's all that to say, this is fun. This is good. They're learning how to win games. I think we all just need to be careful and temper our expectations and not disregard the future and what a good trade deadline and draft can do for this Halo team in the future. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are playing the Tigers at 6.38 Pacific time at the Big A. Davis Daniel, our Locked On Hall of Famer, our favorite uh, minor league pitcher, is finally getting the start. Well-deserved, by the way. If you haven't checked out his interview on our channel, you should check it out because he has the mentality that Barry Enright has brought to this team this year, but he had it before Barry Enright got here, and I think that that's really key when it comes to Davis Daniel. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, since the A's were in town, let's have ourselves a little ownership discussion. John Fisher or Artie Marino, who takes the cake for the league's worst owner? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Taxes are difficult. Full stop. (laughs) They're they're difficult. However you work right now, whatever it is that you file, however it is you're managing your taxes, they can be really difficult, especially if you have late taxes or unfiled taxes. And that's why everydayers, you need Tax Network USA. They are licensed professionals. They are tax experts, and they're going to go to bat for you. 
Over 14 years of experience, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt, and they could save you some money as well. So whether you owe taxes or it's really complicated, or maybe you have some extra money, who wouldn't love extra money right now? Maybe you got some extra money and you're wondering how to file that. Let Tax Network USA help you out. Here's how you can get a hold of them. Call one 800 549 1000 or visit their website, tnusa.com slash locked on. And every day is if you're working on your car, your truck, or your SUV, you need to visit ebaymotors.com. They have everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and, John, even level it up. I know that you got a, a, a car brand new to you. And so it's time for you to go to ebaymotors.com. Maybe you need to look for like a supercharger. That would look yeah, great. On it that was a car. grandparent car. So I do need to level it up, Mike. Which so is even... why it needs a supercharger yes, or a roof exactly. rack. <laughs> Maybe some exhaust kits or an LED headlight, whatever might be the case, whether you're into speed, power or style or all three, like John eBay motors has got you covered and they have over 122 million parts for your auto. So you're going to find exactly what you're looking for every single time. And Love this, the eBay Guarantee Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or you get your money back. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car, truck, or SUV into the MVP and bring home that that big win. So go to ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And the eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team Every day and every dayers, it's time to make the switch to Locked On Sports today from ESPN or Fox Sports or all those guys who are just shouting all morning long. Nobody wants to listen to that. Instead, check out Locked On Sports today where they bring you can't miss analysis, opinions, news, and you're going to want to do that because it's a 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed just for you for free, bringing you the biggest stories across the sports world, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And speaking of your team, every day, the Angels. Back at it tonight at the Big A, continuing that homestand. Let's see what they can do against the Tigers, 6.38 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Yesterday, Jeff Fletcher of the OC Register tweeted this. Anthony Rendon said he's definitely close and feeling Good. Hmm. Hmm. He said he's still deciding if he needs a rehab assignment, but he said he's open to it. And he also said that he's got to sprint on a couple of consecutive days before he can really start to move in the direction of coming back. So far, he's just jogging. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> <And> so- <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I get it. Like he's got a yeah. torn, a torn quad, but it's just like, well, he hasn't, he's just only started jogging yet, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's the like, narrative around him, right? They, it's like, okay, come on, bro, right? I, I like, get it. You're just jogging. What? <laughs> you're not even breaking a sweat, Anthony. What are you doing? <laughs> you're pretending. So here's, here's a couple of questions, John. Uh, obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of roster adjustments and roster moves that have happened in the last couple of days with yeah. injuries and things like that. And we just had a conversation a couple of days ago about like, why Miguel Sano's not here. And then the, the n- narrative was, well, there isn't really any room. And so we suggested, mm-hmm. hey, Stefanik has that option. And then <laughs> like we're geniuses, right? It happens. Sano comes up, Stefanik gets option back. But now it does feel like the roster is a bit, a bit immovable. Like it's lacking some flexibility here. So they're not going to just keep Rendon in the minors. They're not going to keep him on the IL. So, where does he fit first, John? And then second question, who gets sent down? What happens when Rendon comes back? Yeah, I'd be interested to see if they DH him a little bit more, Mike, especially with Snow back, Yeah, uh, given the, that he's got that leg issue, and so they might want to get him off of his feet. Now he's, look, you can say whatever you want about Rendon in terms of, you know, the playing time, the injuries, all that stuff. He's been a great defensive third baseman. I know that he struggled with throwing across the diamond last year. And our hot take from spring training was he's not going to commit an error. And he didn't commit an error in spring training. And then game one, he committed an error. (laughs) But he's also been very good. Defensively, he's very good 
Not a lot of things get past him. Usually he's making great catches in foul territory if it goes that way. So give credit where credit is due. Still a great defender. I do think that the tear might preclude him from being out there at third base. And I know Renjifo has been hit and miss, but I got to say, out of all the seasons that he's played the infield, I think this is his best season at third base just yeah. from the eye test. Now, yep. I'd love to get into what Fangraphs has to say about his defense, and I can do that at a later date. But by all accounts, he's been making some pretty studly plays over there at third base, making the uh, the difficult plays that he needs to. So I I wonder if they would want to see what Renjifo can continue to do over there at third base. And if not him, then Miguel Sano. So I, I think that Anthony may take some DH time. If that's the case, then in all likelihood, I think Willie Calhoun is the first one to be sent down. Now he's out of options. He does have a minor league contract, so he would need to pass through waivers. I did talk about this uh, last Friday on Fan Mail Friday about what happens when Trout and Rendon come back. Well, we're kind of running out of those guys that you can send down freely and not have to worry about. And I think I think Calhoun would be the next guy to go. And that's if they don't get a Kevin Pillar deal done here pretty yeah. soon, unless somebody is ready to trade for him and get them in their outfield. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I do think it will happen, just not anytime soon, Mike. I wonder if they're going to delay the Anthony Rendon return so that they can maybe try to make a move either with Calhoun or mm -hmm. Pilar. I think Pilar is going to be the guy that they would more than likely trade. And mm -hmm. if I'm having to choose, John, honestly, I think I would keep Willie Calhoun and try to do something with Kevin Pilar or just DFA him or release him simply because I think you're having a downward trend with Pilar and Calhoun's been pretty consistent at the plate and you can rotate him in the outfield or perhaps at first, maybe even at DH. I know they have a little bit more flexibility with Kevin Pilar, but that would be my initial reaction to all of this. And I wonder what they're going to do with the lineup. Do you think that Rendon goes back to the leadoff spot? I mean, mm. all likelihood would be that he, that he does, right? Yeah. No, Nolan Shonowell isn't crushing it out of the leadoff spot. So I think it would make sense for Rendon who, draws walks and gets on base and, you know, doesn't hit into double plays. I think it would make all the sense in the world for him to take that leadoff spot again. But Mike, I think Kevin Pilar is more of a necessity right now because he's been playing the role of the fourth outfielder. Yes. Yeah, Ward, Moniak and Adele out there. And Pilar has been in there every now and then. And I also think that just not very long ago, we were talking about Willie Calhoun and, Oh boy, he's slumping again. Now he's had a couple of great games. I think, I really think we have to take this a week at a time, especially with number one, Rendon's recovery, number two and three, how are Calhoun and Pilar performing? I think you kind of evaluate each week of, all right, who do we need more? What's, what's it going to take? Who, who needs to be traded or sent down or whatever the case might be between Pilar and Calhoun? Because, you know, it it's, feels like a fluid situation right now but i think at the end of the day what you said about rendon about not in any hurry to get him back and we always make the joke he's probably not in a hurry to come back either but, right. but it's, i i think that makes sense and they might be able baseball has a way of working these things out like yep. we saw with the rotation and wondering who's going to be in it and then sandoval gets hurt so there's a way these things always work out and i have a feeling that something will work out before Anthony Rendon comes back. Today's episode of Locked On Angels is brought to you by Booking.com. It's summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime. It's heating up, Johnny, and it's time to travel a bit, especially if you're a baseball fan. We had some friends, longtime friends, that at one point visited every single baseball stadium. Nice. They went to Montreal and Ooh. saw the Expos play, which was Great, and they wanted to do that before the son graduated from high school, so they were able to achieve that. And you can too. You can visit all of those cities with Booking.com with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more. You can find it all at Booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay, even if you go to your favorite team's rival 
city, John. So was that LA <laughs> for us? Like what? Texas, Seattle, right? Seattle. Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Who, who wants to go to Seattle? Nobody wants to go to Seattle, <laughs> right? From I hotels, do. from hotels that overlook stadiums, which are awesome, by the way, to family friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U S for summer travel, this major league baseball season. So you can stay in a city and be a fan of your team in whatever city that you stay in. Take the guesswork out of travel and flex your booking power with our favorite website, our new everydayers, booking.com. So book today on booking.com. It's the site where you can go anywhere, even to your rival's city. It's booking.com or booking.com. Yeah. And then today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn. Salespeople and those working in sales, LinkedIn has a gift for you. It's called the Sales Navigator, and it's a sales tele intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers. In doing so, it's going to help you bring in higher revenue and increase your sales performance. The LinkedIn Sales Navigator helps you to target the right buyers, be aware of key signals like job changes and which accounts you should prioritize. Also shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers who are most likely to convert. And it's fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform. Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the right people that matter. So right now you can try it for free for 60 days at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for that 60-day free trial. Go to LinkedIn dot com slash locked on to get started today. Mike playing the A's this week had a, us thinking and it brought to the surface the ownership conversation and how difficult it is to be a fan of the A's. My friend Julio is a longtime A's fan. I texted him an image of the angels sweeping the A's and he said, Ace Julio is dead, John. He doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> and I just said, you know what? I had to do it. I had to do it. I had yeah. to I had to send the sweep gift. But ownership has made it really tough on these two teams. John Fisher, owner of the A's, plans to move the team. And it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. They're going to play in the minor league system, uh, the minor league stadium for the Giants in Sacramento for a couple of years. Yeah. And he can't wait to see Aaron judge hit home runs there. He can't wait to right. see, I mean, what a stupid comment. <laughs> yeah. In, in case you're unaware, he said, it's going to be great for fans in Sacramento to see Aaron judge hit home runs and Shohei Otani do his, like he talked about everybody, but his the team. A's players. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then there was a promotional video where one of the <laughs> logos in the video was like an iron shaped a, and it wasn't the A's a Michael. It was the, Atlanta Braves a in yeah. the video. So I'm not even sure that anybody knows what team they work for or who they're supposed to be working with. Now that makes sense because they're Oakland and now they're Vegas, but they're going to be Sacramento and they're not going to have Oakland. Uh, they're not going to have a team name across the front of their jerseys next year, other than athletics. They're not going to have a city on the front. So they're going to move to Sacramento for a couple of years. They're going to build this uh, pie in the sky stadium in Vegas, but nothing seems certain because there's all kinds of political back and forth and you know do the taxpayers even want to front this there's tons of studies out there that show that new stadiums do not generate the tax revenue that they always pitch that it will now we bring this up because of our complaints about arnie marino as the owner of the angels so the big question here is are fans justified angel fans justified in their frustration toward Artie Marino, us included, we certainly have had our gripes, when there's owners like John Fisher out there. How would you compare the two, Mike? I, apples and oranges is how I would compare the two because it's okay to be frustrated with what is laying in front of you, even if it's better than the frustration of this particular thing that's not mm. in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's totally okay and totally appropriate to go, come on, Artie, we got to get this together. We got to figure this out. And if you're just going to make money, then sell the team and make your money. And then let's get an owner who's going to spend some money, develop the minor leagues, help us to have everything that we need so that we can produce winners like the Dodgers and like the Braves, like the Baltimore Orioles, right? Like that's what we want. So it's okay for Angel fans to be frustrated and 
it's okay for Angel fans to have empathy for A's fans who are frustrated with their owner. And I know that the narrative out there is, well, be careful what you wish for, because if Artie does sell, you might get an owner like John Fisher. And the truth is, yeah, yeah. perhaps you might. But the, the reality is, is that something needs to happen with the Angels and something needs to happen with the A's. I just got done watching the uh, Who Killed WCW on Vice TV. <laughs> yes. And what... The A's feel it always like come the, back to wrestling. The late, the late '90s, early 2000s WCW. That's what it feels like. It's just a mess. Now the Angels aren't messy in that way. There is some sort of organization, but I think that it's okay to have a frustration here and a frustration there. I don't think that you compare the two because it's two different situations and it's two different owners and it's two different strategies and it's two different fan bases. It's both and, right? It's not either or. It's both and be a both and person. That's yeah. that's what we try New to be arts. here. I'm locked, in, <laughs> locked on angels, Mike. You know, I I think about their strategies over the years and how obviously the Angels have spent way more money than the A's, but the A's have had more success than the Angels historically, and especially in the last twenty years. And the reason why is the A's give themselves a chance to make a run every so often, and when guys get to the end of their arbitration years or their their uh, and the free agency comes up, that's when they trade away all your favorite players, right? So imagine we have Zach Neto, Logan O'Happy, Nolan Shawnwell, Reed Detmers. Imagine that they're getting us to the playoffs and they do it three years in a row. And then suddenly they're on everybody else's team because Artie Marino doesn't want to pay them their contracts or what they're worth or extend them. And then you go through three years of, garbage until you get your next round of Ohapis and Nettos and Sean Wells. And the problem with A's fan or the problem A's fans have with that strategy is, Hey, I really liked Matt Olson and I really liked Matt Chapman. And why didn't you extend Marcus Simeon? He's been tearing it up for the Rangers and Matt Olson's tearing it up for the, uh, the, the Braves. And so it, it that's been the frustrating part for A's fans. In addition to the inability to get a new stadium built you know, they talked about San Jose at one point and there was still going to be Oakland there. I know there was waterfront, uh, Howard terminal stuff situation there. And now they're going to be moved out of the state out of the, it's almost like the legacy of the A's is gone because mm -hmm. they spent so much time in Oakland. And I know they weren't always in Oakland, but what they did in Oakland is huge. And, and you can't take that away from the fans who grew up around there. Now, when it comes to, already in the team, their strategy has been let's get some superstars and fill the seats and make as much money as possible. So it's really like on one hand, Fisher's team was at least competitive, even though it was always like a three, four year cycle and then two years off and three, four years back on again, at least they were competitive and trading away their prospect, their top guys for really good prospects right now. They're kind of in flux again. Of course, they're behind the angels in fifth place. Having said that, at least there was like a baseball strategy there. I know it hurts to rip the bandaid off when all your favorite players get traded. So it's almost a question of, do you want, do you want loyalty to the city? Well, I shouldn't say that loyalty to the city. Do you want your team to stay in the city that it's in, or do you want to have success? And, and that's kind of the difference in the conversation here. Now I think it's a total injustice to the fans in Oakland for what's going on. Uh, but when you compare baseball strategies, it seems like, Fisher and company let the baseball stuff play out. Artie's just too involved. And I appreciate that the team is still in Anaheim. I, every now and then we get comments about like, I think Artie's going to move the team. And I'm like, I don't see that anywhere. I don't see articles about it. I don't see reports about it. He's 78 years old. Like what would be the point in moving the team? If he want, if he wanted to, like, I, I just don't think he's going to be around long enough to move the team. All that to say, I am glad that the Angels are staying in Anaheim. And if they were to move, I know that the rumors years ago was like Long Beach and things like that. At least they would still be local. But to go from California, the Bay Area, to Nevada, Las Vegas, it just feels wrong at the end of the day. So I am grateful for the fact that our team is here to stay uh, as far as we know. I know that Artie Marino has not been the best owner, but I just think it's a total disservice to A's fans, what John Fisher and company are doing to them. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen to the day. The Angels play the Tigers, 638 Pacific time. Rawr. Davis Daniel. <laughs>
Rawr. Davis Daniel, our boy, is on the mound. I'm going to be rooting for him. Come on, Heck Davis. Yeah. We need a good start. Catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter, at Lockdown Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, find today's show. Hit that like button on the way down to the comment section. Get in that comment section. We want to hear from you because, Mike, tomorrow is always our favorite day of the week. What do we got on deck? Fan Mail Friday, so get us your questions, your comments. You can even call our voicemail line. The number is in the episode description. Leave us a 30-second voicemail. We would love to hear with hear from you and talk with you about the Angels, and we're also going to recap Davis Daniels' start against the Tigers. So a lot to do on Friday on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. We hope you'll come back and join us again. Wait a second. No, we're going to recap the Tiger series on Monday. We're, we're going to do all four games. So it'll, okay. just be, it'll just be Fan Mail Friday tomorrow. Forgot to say that ahead of time. When there's a four game set and it's like a weird schedule, you guys, we will recap the entire series uh, all together more time on Monday. To observe Davis yes. Daniel. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So we'll do that. Uh, so, yes, three segments of Fan Mail Friday for you tomorrow. All right, friends. Until then, my name is John and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. And we'll see you back here on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Get a win, Davis. Come on. Rawr.